Hi, my name is Ashley. I'm from Imagine If Libraries, and this is a Teen Eats cooking tutorial, which is a part of a video series where I give some sort of teen media recommendation, and then I cook something inspired by that recommendation. Today, I'm throwing a Tim Burton watch party. We have a full itinerary today. We're going to cook five things. Each one of the foods we're cooking is inspired by a Tim Burton film. So we're going to make some pumpkin queso, dirt cake, lemonade, shrimp cocktail, and pigs in a blanket. Why don't we get started on our pumpkin queso? So the first step we're taking today to make our pumpkin queso is to actually just prep the sugar pumpkin, which is going to be the vessel for our queso. I have a secured cutting board and a really sharp large chef's knife. I'm just going to try to cut a square top into the sugar pumpkin. And then I'm going to pull the top out and all of the seeds out of the pumpkin. So it was a feat of strength just to pull this top off of the pumpkin. The whole time I was making sure to hold the blade away from my body while I was trying to pull this top out, but I got it out and it is full, my pumpkin's full of seeds. So these sugar pumpkins are normally what's used in pumpkin pie. I'm going to pull all the seeds and the pulp out of my pumpkin, make sure it is totally empty. And then I'm also gonna save these seeds for later and I'm gonna roast them. But in order to roast these pumpkin seeds, I would have to dry them out and then clean them, and then I'd roast them at a low temperature. So I've done my best to get all the pulp and seeds out of this pumpkin. There's still some pulp in there, but that's okay. I am going to put a cheese sauce in this pumpkin, and we're going to bake it, and then the cheese sauce will be like sort of imbued with this sweet pumpkin flavor and the pumpkin will be really soft. It's going to be delicious. So next we're just going to make the cheese sauce, which is going to be really similar to that bechamel sauce I made in my fish pie video. So now I am browning some Spanish chorizo and a jalapeno. They've both been really finely diced. And I am just looking for the oil from the chorizo to start coming out. So, to that chorizo jalapeno mix, I'm going to add a can of green chilies. It's like the whole can. And some cumin sauteing in that oil and then when the chorizo is fully browned I'm going to add a couple tablespoons of flour to, thick to thicken the cheese sauce and then we'll add the cheese and a little bit of chicken broth. So originally this recipe called for Spanish chorizo which is what I'm using right now but the last time I made it I use Mexican chorizo, which is fresh, it's like a fresh ground meat, and Spanish chorizo is a dried cured meat. Um, I preferred it with the Mexican chorizo, but I remembered I had the Spanish chorizo in the fridge, which ever you find is going to be really good in this queso. I am now going to add some chicken broth to our toasted up chorizo. I added a couple tablespoons of flour to thicken the sauce. Now once this boils, I'm going to add probably two and a half, three cups of shredded cheese to this sauce. And today I am using pepper jack and sharp cheddar. The sauce 
is super, super customizable. You can make it mild. I've made it spicy here with this Mexican or with this Spanish chorizo. And you can pretty much use whatever fresh cheese you want. I'm using two different cheeses that have a high moisture content in them, which means the cheeses um, shred really easily. They're not crumbly, but you can use whatever melty cheese you want. You don't really want to use like Parmesan or a cheese that has a high fat content like brie, but cheddar and pretty much all Mexican cheeses were really good in this queso. It's time to add the cheese. Now I'm just adding my queso right into this raw pumpkin. I've also put an inch of boiling water at the bottom of this baking dish. And we are going to bake this queso filled pumpkin for about an hour in a 375 degree oven. So the pumpkin queso is representative of Tim Burton's films as a whole. But the next thing we're going to make is lemonade, which is straight out of Edward Scissorhands. And I'm actually going to flavor our lemonade with a mint ginger simple syrup because I think that that would be really good. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually roll our lemons on our counter here so that they release all of their juice. I'm going to squeeze the lemons and then we'll make the simple syrup. I am simmering our simple syrup over medium heat here. A simple syrup is nothing but equal parts sugar and water. So I have a cup of unrefined sugar here and a cup of water. I'm just looking to melt the sugar or to dissolve the sugar into the water. Once it's dissolved, and I think we're about there, I'm adding this bunch of mint I have to it. I'm going to take it off the heat and I'm going to rough up our mint a little bit. Add it right into the syrup and I think I'm going to add two tablespoons of ginger as well. Before I Maybe just a tablespoon and a half. Before I add our cooled simple syrup to the lemonade, I am going to strain it. So if there are some chunks of ginger in your simple syrup, no worries, we're going to strain it before we even add it to the lemonade. Now we are going to prep our shrimp cocktail, which is straight from Beetlejuice. I love making shrimp cocktail, and this is how I'm going to make it today. So in this large stock pot, I have filled it up with water, I have scrubbed a couple carrots and a stalk of celery and just cut them up into quarters. I've also halved a lemon, and there are some floating spices, including some peppercorns in there. I'm just going to bring this all to a boil and then add a pound of shrimp, remove it from the heat and let it just the shrimp just sit in those flavors for a couple minutes. All right, we're boiling, so I'm going to add in my shell on shrimp. We'll clean up the shrimp after they're done cooking. I'm going to turn my element off. These shrimp will need about three minutes, maybe five minutes. So we're just looking for our shrimp to curl up and become pink, just like this one. Now I'm going to take the shrimp out to rest, we will make some dirt cake next. So dirt cake isn't actually cake, it's just alternating layers of crushed up sandwich cookies, pudding, and whipped cream. We are going to make our pudding from scratch today. Let's first crush up our sandwich cookies. So I put in about 10 sandwich cookies into this bag, and then I have sealed it airtight so when you roll it, it's not going to pop. I just want to 
our sandwich cookies to be crushed up enough that it looks like dirt. Then we're going to make our pudding, which is really simple. It's going to go low and slow in a saucepan. And normally for pudding, you have to add eggs really slowly into your pudding when you are heating it up over an element, but I'm going to try to make eggless pudding today. Here, I am making our pudding. So I've put in this pan some sugar, some cornstarch, cocoa powder, whisked it together. I've turned my element on to medium, medium high heat. Now I'm just going to add some heavy cream into the pan to make a paste. As you can see, it's this paste is already melting, which is exactly what we're looking for. I'm going to slowly add the rest of the milk into our pudding. So traditionally in pudding, recipes will call for eggs to give the pudding like a really silky texture. And you add the eggs in really slowly over a lower heat into this chocolate mixture so that you don't curdle the eggs. And adding eggs into a hot mixture is called tempering. But we are doing something a little different today Hopefully this turns out all right. I'm also going to add a couple ounces of dark chocolate, which will be the real star of this pudding. And then when I whisked in all my milk, I'm going to let this sit in my fridge for probably 15 minutes to let it cool. Now I'm making what I think is the easiest food of today, which is pigs in a blanket, which are just like mini hot dogs or halved hot dogs wrapped in croissanto and then baked at the same time and temperature as what the croissant dough instructions call for. I was inspired by Frank and Weenie to make these, but we're also going to make my favorite dipping sauce for these. It's time to assemble our shrimp cocktail and make the dipping sauce for our pigs in a blanket. So the dipping sauce for our pigs in a blanket is just going to be chipotle mayo, which chipotle mayo is just these chipotle peppers and adobo sauce minced up really finely with mayo, some lime juice and lime zest and some seasonings all mixed together. But to assemble our shrimp cocktail, we have to take the shells off of our shrimp. So I bought these shell on shrimp for our sort of like seasoning bath that we made because I knew that they would fare better. To take the shells off of shrimp, the shell should just pop right off. It's a little time consuming, but not too difficult. The shell should also pop off with their legs. And then you can also take the tail off if you would like. And then when all the shells are off of my shrimp, I'm going to hang them on the side of this cocktail glass like this, the shrimp cocktail glass, and put the shrimp cocktail dip in this glass. So it's going to be the shrimp hanging off the side and then on the bottom, it's going to be minced celery. Sometimes it's minced celery and white onion, but I just have celery today, minced up, really small at the bottom, and then on the top I'm going to make the shrimp cocktail sauce, which will be fresh horseradish and ketchup and maybe a little lemon juice. The last thing that we're doing today is compiling our dirt cakes. So I have whipped cream that I made out of heavy whipping cream, some powdered sugar, and a little bit of vanilla, and then I have our pudding that didn't really set, and our crumbled up sandwich cookies. So I think I'm going to start with our sandwich cookies. 
and then scoop in a pretty thick layer. This is sort of like, these dirt cakes are sort of like trifle, which is just like different types of soft dessert layers like pudding and whipped cream and cookies. So I have our sandwich cookies and then I'm going to spoon in what was supposed to be our pudding. It is still going to taste really good even though it's not quite the right consistency. I'd recommend if I did this again just using the tempered egg type of pudding from scratch and then a layer of whipped cream I mean hopefully we get to find layers but we we might not here but I am just making this dirt cake for myself so it is okay if it's not quite perfect I think, I mean, we should end off with another thick layer of sandwich cookies on top, but we might not quite have that layer. We're going to see. All right, it looks like layers. I think a fun decoration for these dirt cakes, I mean, normally these are served with like gummy worms, but another fun decoration would probably be like those little mini pumpkins. I think that would be kind of cute. Let's see. overflowing a little bit. And then I was inspired to make these dirt cakes after watching The Corpse Bride, which I might rewatch after I'm done making this Tim Burton-esque spread. All right, our Tim Burton watch party spread is ready. Normally I would invite other people to my watch party, but this time just making this great food and picking out my favorite movies has been a great exercise at self care. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you all for watching and I will see you next time.